You happy now? Yes, now. That sounds amazing. It sounded great to start with, but now that thing, now that amp sounds amazing. Hi everyone, my name's James Ivey. I'm Paul Drew. From the Studio Rats. Nice. Now, if you joined us recently, we were um, singing the praises, the virtues of my rather beautiful 50 watt JCM 900 two, uh, two channel, two for 12 combo amp. Mm -hmm. it sounds amazing. Uh, and at the end of said video, we uh, noticed that I'd been a silly boy and it was in low power mode. So we were in 25 watt mode, not full beans, 50 watt mode. And quite frankly, my friend Paul Drew here said, I like it, it's great, but there was definitely a but. So yeah, the difference is it didn't feel as responsive as what I was expecting it to. It, it, it felt great. It felt great, but it felt like there was something that was lacking. It didn't feel like you probably remembered it. It didn't feel as instant as immediate. And yeah, well, it didn't feel as instant and immediate as my other amps. So we then went, hang on a second, flick it into high gain mode or into full power mode. And I think it's fair to say it's a different beast. It's a different beast. Should we get the list, Paul? Yeah, I mean, it sounds amazing with a Strat. It sounds, it's that proper kind of bluesy, open, yeah. single coily. Now, what's interesting is that the uh, we're on dual get on the high gain channel, and it's about three o'clock, which was where it was starting to sound flubby, and yeah. there wasn't much definition. And you were saying categorically, you preferred the clean channel with pedals and effects yeah. to give you the gain. Yeah. Whereas now, we th that's no effects, no pedals, no nothing. That's just coming from the amp, and it again. sounds epic. Just for tightness. Really tight and it's also fair enough to say that you were playing Les Paul in the last video. Should we do that? Do that. Okay. And I think it's fair to say this is where that amp comes to life. Oh yeah. Now, when we were doing the Gary Moore sound video with mm -hmm. the Katana, mm -hmm. we were trying and working really hard to get that kind of chirrup sound, that kind of amp dig in. Basically, this sound. It's got that. Isn't it? What it's just fat and just proper yeah. rock and roll. Um, I'd even forgotten that I'd fl flicked it into half power mode because you know at home in the studio you think I don't need full 50 watts but now I have a ten we have attenuators and stuff and we're running this through the torpedo again because quite frankly we don't want to be running the tube of 12 out full oh. tilt because we'd be blown away we'd be deaf can you, can you put it on the clean channel for me yes can you bring the gain up just a little bit on the clean channel yeah. Really bright. Which it wasn't before. You had to work really hard. There's a, you were yeah. pushing a lot of treble and a lot of presence to get that yeah. brightness. So in some ways, this is a real, I would say master class, but it's kind of a master mistake. Don't <laughs> assume that just by flicking between full power and half power, pentode and triode modes on your, on your valve amps, it's gonna sound the same, because it doesn't. It clearly doesn't in this case. <laughs> Oh. 
That's a great noise. That's a good noise. Should we try P90s? Yeah. There's only one problem now. Is that? I want a guitar with P90s. <laughs> yeah, it's killer, isn't it? So this is a kind of addendum to the, the Mark One video. I mean, I think, you know, I thought this was a great sounding amp before, and you said, yeah, hmm, ha, but I think you've now gone, I want one, haven't you? No, I thought it was a great sounding amp. Yeah. But I was, I was thinking, well, it doesn't really do anything my other amps don't do, and I think my other amps sound better. Now I think that's, that's a great gigging amp. And also for the money, for like, between in the UK, you can pick these up from between say 250 and say 400 quid. Yeah, that is an absolute bargain for a. Are they hand built? I, I, Were they hand built? I should I say. I think. I I would have thought they would have. There's PCBs, so I mean, obviously the PCB okay. the PCB would have been floated in order to. Right. Uh, and I only know that because a mate of mine at college actually worked. He was from Milton Keynes that worked at Marshall at the weekends. Oh, um, so they had the whole floating um, soldering technology thing. So you dip dip the 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 PCB into the solder, oh. and it does them all at the same time. It's really, oh, it's a really cool, cool technology. Um, but I think they were hand assembled. I think that's a fair, fair yeah. way of doing it. Um, it's a, a, a thing. It's a beast. I mean, they mm -hmm. they weigh a ton. I mean, yeah. anyone I know who's gigged one has made a kind of a, a skateboard for them. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. um, it, it is a beast. But yeah. you know, if you're moving a lot of air. Mm -hmm. And you're producing a lot of power. I'm not sure I want something that's really, really flimsy and horrible and, no. and, and faffy. I want something that's got some girth to it. And yes, I did say girth. Did you? Nice. Um, so yeah, even you know something like a Les Paul. That's really nice and articulate for a Les Paul. That's great. I love it. Absolutely love that. Cool. Well, there you go. There's a not even an about face, more of a an additional satisfaction opinion guarantee type mm -hmm. thing. We're waffling now, aren't we? Really? Yeah, waffling. So, hope you enjoyed that. If you got something out of it, please do like, subscribe, hit the bell, all the stuff we ask you to do. But for now, my name's James Ivy. I'm Paul Drew, and we will see you again very soon. Cool. I'll, I wonder if I just make that into one video. <laughs>